I'm Ty Rains for Community 10 Television, and I am here with Len Skaronski, who is the leader of the Alberta Social Credit Party. Welcome, Len. Thanks, Ty. Um, so, can you tell us a little about yourself and your background here in Alberta? Sure. I'm a third generation Albertan. I was born in a little village called Redwater, where most people know about it. it used to be a, one of our first uh, boom, uh, boom towns. I grew up in uh, various little little towns where my dad was a teacher and principal of these schools. My grandparents and most of my uncles and aunts were farmers, so I spent most of my summers in the farms playing and working. So I have a good, good feel for what farming and ranching is all about and what rural communities are all about. I went to the University of Alberta and got a BSc in math and also a professional teaching certificate. I taught school for a couple of years, one year in Carstairs, the other in BAM. And then I went and uh, worked in the oil industry. I spent a year with a seismic company and then joined a small oil and gas company called Canadian Pacific Oil and Gas, where I, I started doing computer programming. As the company grew, I, I grew with the IT department and into a management position. Finally, the company was Pan-Canadian Petroleum and is now in Canada. Later, I, I worked overseas in North Africa and the Middle East doing IT consulting, mostly for oil and gas clients. So I have a good idea of uh, the oil and gas industry here in Alberta and also over in the overseas. And I, I see how things could be done much better and improved in Alberta, where these people in the Middle East and North Africa are getting much more for their resources than the people of Alberta. So when I came back in 2002 from my foreign ventures, I was very disappointed to see how badly the uh, economy and the society in general had, had gone down during uh, Klein's reign. So I decided to get involved in politics and I went to the internet just to see what the current policies were and I found social credit was still something that was closest to my philosophy. So I actually ran in the 2004 election. In 2007, the leader of the party decided to retire and we had a leadership convention. I ran and I won. So here I am, leader of the Alberta Social Credit Party. All right, um, can you give us a little bit of background and history about the Social Credit Party and where it's planning on going in the future? Sure. During the the depression of the 30s, the farmers were in, in, in real distress right across uh, Canada and particularly in Alberta. It wasn't that they weren't producing enough goods. Somehow there just wasn't enough money for people to buy it, even though there were some people starving. So. Uh, a person called uh, William Aberhart embraced a philosophy that had been char started by an engineer in England called C.H. Douglas called social credit. And it was a, an economic system with, based on a Christian philosophy that in, in, enabled a society to develop it with high moral and, and uh, ethical standards and, and really concentrate on social justice for all citizens. So Aberhart embraced this philosophy and uh, presented it to Albertans as, as a way to get out of, out of the mess that the Depression was causing. Now, Aberhart was an, uh, an evangelical minister and did use the radio to, to broadcast his Christian uh, 
sermons as well as his economic sermons. So in 1935, the Social Credit government won the election and uh, started to, to implement the social credit policies. But of course, the big banks and the multinational companies were really against it because one of the policies of this new social credit philosophy was that money should not, you should not charge interest. Money should just be there to, to help trading of goods and services. Banks should not be charging interest. Of course, the banks weren't very happy about this. So a lot of, a lot of the banks, uh, because of the uh, farmers had no money, the banks confiscated the land, but that didn't help them any because nobody had money to buy the land. So finally, over a hundred branches of the Eastern banks pulled out of Alberta. And so we were left without banks. So the social credit government started the Alberta Treasury branch, which was to take place of these banks that had left. They also in, legislated the Credit Union Act so that people on their own could form their own banks. And uh, <clears throat> so that really helped people. What, one of the things that social credit said they would do was help people by giving them dividends. And for a while, they did, did give out dividends. One of the, the policies of social credit is that you must, consumers never have enough money to purchase the goods and services that they create. There's always a gap. So for instance, if you create some widgets, maybe half of the cost is for labor, the other half for materials and administration and sad to say interest so and if you look at all the all of the uh, companies and, and establishments that produce goods and services this all happens so there's always so you only have half of the money is going to the people who are going to buy the goods so unless you export you're you're not going to to have a viable economy so our philosophy is that you must give the consumer these dividends so that they can actually buy the goods that they produce so that's one of our one of our uh, planks that, that uh, form social credit another is that you should not have to pay interest to use money money is not a commodity it has no value it's just there to facilitate trading and so that is another plank that we stand on that uh, you, you should not have to pay interest to to get money. Thank you very much, Lynn. That was a very in-depth look at um, the Social Credit Party's history and largely covers the first point in a series which you have written on. Um, it's called What About Our Money? And it looks at the socioeconomic state of Alberta at the moment and what the Social Credit Party would be doing to change it to improve lives for many Albertans. Are there any other points you would like to address from the first part of your series there? Yes, a, a couple more. For going back in, into creating enough money in society so that there is enough money to produce the need, goods and services needed by people and enough money for these people to, to consume these goods and services. Now. It is the responsibility of the Bank of Canada to create this money, these, these funds. Unfortunately, they've given up this responsibility to the private banks. And the private banks create the money. Now, many people don't know this. But, for instance, if you put $1,000 into a savings account, you think, well, the bank lends this money out and they charge a bit of interest to make it worthwhile to, to have the bank. Well, it's much more than worthwhile. From that $1,000, they will lend out at up to 30 times that. So you have 1,000 there, they will lend out 30,000. They just make up, that 30,000 is make up, they call it leveraging. And say they're charging 5% per annum. So, that, so on your 1,000, they will lend out 30,000, 
you'll get fifteen hundred dollars in interest on your thousand. So, and maybe they'll ch they'll give you one two percent on yours. So, so you'll make uh, twenty dollars, and they'll make fifteen hundred. And and this is. You know, there's a word for this. It's usury, and and actually, it's it's considered a sin in uh, Judeo-Christian philosophy to actually charge interest to use something that has really no value, money. Now, since the Bank of Canada has has given up its responsibility there and given it to private banks, we say in Alberta, well let's bring the Alberta Treasury branch back to its original mandate to create the money needed to make Alberta's economy work. Now, we, we, we would do this, and you can create this money just like the private banks do, or also the private banks will, will borrow money from the Bank of Canada at what current is, let's say the current prime rate is 1%, and they'll lend it out 3, 4, 5%. For instance, in 2008, when, when uh, we had this economic downturn, the markets crashed in, in the U.S., and uh, there was some spillover into Canada, the federal government stimulated the economy by $60 billion. Now, where did they get that $60 billion? You would have thought, well, why didn't the Bank of Canada just create it? No, they got it by selling treasury brand bonds at 3.5%, which was mainly bought by the banks. And where did the banks get the money to buy this, or to, to lend to the federal government? They got it from the Bank of Canada at 1%. So they borrowed from the Bank of, one, at one, Bank of Canada at 1%, and uh, lent it to the federal government, who actually owns the Bank of Canada, at 3.5%. So there's a 2.5% spread, which made the banks and the shareholders and the executive extremely rich. And guess who's paying the difference? It's all of us taxpayers. So we want to get rid of, of this kind of a system. Now, because banking is a federal responsibility, we can't really control the Bank of Canada, but we can control, we can make our own Bank of Alberta. And that's what we want to do with the Alberta Treasury Branch. Thank you very much for explaining the goals of the Social Credit Party with our viewers with the tre in regards to the Treasury Branch. Is there anything further you would like to discuss on the matter? Yes, when, when you're creating money, usually you, you would want collateral. Some people say, well, you should have a gold standard or something. How can you create money? You can create money on the collateral that you have. Now, on the next session, I will talk about the collateral we have in our natural resources. Thank you very much, Len. Thanks, Ty. I've been. This has been Ty Rains for Community 10 Television.